So today we're going to go over high levels, new contract updates that allow you to create and automate contracts in a completely different way. And today we're going to show you how to do that. So stay tuned and build along with us. All right, so just know that contracts have been around for a while, and I can tell you that there's been some really cool updates that are going to allow us to automate not only the sending out of templated contracts, but also at the same time, when somebody signs or completes the action on the contracts, you can then have them return back. So I'm going to kind of show you a multitude of different ways in order to do this. But the cool thing about it is, is now you can make a part of your onboarding process and you can just automate the flow to make it super easy. So the first thing that we're going to do is understand where contracts are. So the contracts are, you're going to go to payments on the left-hand side, then come over here and you're going to go over to to all documents and contracts. All documents and contracts are where you're currently your documents are located. Templates are where your templates are gonna be formed. Now, in order for the automations and the automated part and even the signing part kind of comes in where it's all automated, you need to create templates. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come over here, you're gonna hit the new, and you have the choice of either uploading a PDF or creating a new template. I'm gonna show you how to do both. The first one was gonna do a brand new template, right? And you know that we like to pretty much number everything. So we're gonna go over here and we're gonna say fake contract, okay? And then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to drag over custom values. And if you wanted to put a logo image, by all means, you can put a logo image right behind. And just for the practice of it, I can come over here. And if I go right to the image, where are you? Image URL, we'll go right to our media library. And again, I'm just going to hopefully put something in here real quick. This is one of the companies we help out. Awesome organization. We go in there and we just put it in there, right? Next, I would have whatever the first part of the contract is, all right? And then I would say blah, 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 blah. And then at some point, I would need business name. Anytime you need a custom value that is going to be associated with the person you're sending it to, you're going to come in here and you're going to select the custom values or the user. So for instance, if you already have custom values on there, this is what you use. Let me just kind of slow this because it's blocking the way. If it's about the contact, the person you're sending it to, that's the contact, you are the user. So for instance, if you wanted to list their company name, so it'd be like some kind of rule or law, blah, 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 you know, to the company name and the person. So it'd be like full name of the person on whatever date, you know what I'm saying? So you would have maybe a custom field that you would use that would be very specific to the customer. That would be under, under general info. Like maybe it's the last purchase date. I'm just making something up, but it would be whatever legal jargon you need in order to do that. And again, you would seek a lawyer of some sort or get some kind of template from a reliable source to create a full contract and just make sure this is pretty aligned. Now this is all said and done. You could just keep adding. You're going to come in here and then you're going to do the product list, the video. And then even if you have to add page breaks or a table, you can. But the most important thing at the end of it, right? You finish this whole entire thing. And then all the way at the end, let's just kind of add um, kind of some words. Oop, let me just kind of close this out. Click in here. You know, we would just add a whole bunch of words, hundred bunch of words, blah, 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 whatever. And then you would have customer name, something like this. And then again, you would use custom values up here, contact, full name, all right? And then right underneath, you would have like a line, something saying signature, create little double space. And this is the cool parts that were just added, which is the signature right here. So now you can add the signature line right down here and just add it to the contract. And then same thing with the date line that they can now fill in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go here, date, probably give it a little bit more space so that it's like not on top of each other. And I come over here and now they'll have a date selector that they can enter the date on, right? So right here, we'll just make that a little bit longer and that will show up the date. So awesome, you have the template. This is honestly it. There's not really all kinds of craziness that happens here. The date formats are gonna be the same. Obviously you wanna change it to US times if you're in the US. Available dates, that's only if you're really using proposals and stuff like that, but that's pretty much it. And to be filled by not me, but the customer that we're gonna send it to and so forth and so on. You're gonna go ahead and hit save and we're just gonna leave that there for a second. That's one way where you create it from scratch yourself. You can also, like I said, create files in Canva or in Adobe Acrobat or whatever, you know, kind of fillable PDF you want to do. So let me give you an example on that, right? So now let's create one where we upload the PDF. And by the way, it's going to be great for not using only contracts, but any other kind of agreements, employment, W-9s, anything that is legally bound that you want to keep track of, that you don't want to go and chase people afterwards and you kind of want to automate the process, you could totally do that. So what you're going to do is you're going to come over here, let's upload a fake contract. So I'm going to hit right here. It's going to go right to my folders. And I believe all right, I'm just going to use this sample contract from one of our friends here. Awesome. It's uploading the PDF now. And we're going to label this zero two fake contract, whatever you're going to do, just make sure you give it a really great naming convention. So then it doesn't do it right. So this is completely fake. Everything is, you know, kind of what it is. You would insert things here wherever it says insert. Now the cool thing of it is you would just come in here and any text field that needs to be inserted, guess what you would do? Just come in here, make it the size of whatever it is, or better yet, you can come over here 
do the same thing with the text line and just override this, right? So you would first create all this first elsewhere. Again, you would change it all up before you would upload it. So it would have your name of the school or whatever else. But here's again, where you would want to make sure that all this is right. So anything that has a printable field, you can have as many of these as you want. So you can come over here, like label it right here. And this is your first field. Then you come over here, text field, right on the line itself. Boom. Come over here, and then we're going to do the text field. Boom. And then do one more. And if there's initials, let's see, initials got to be connected. Somewhere you put a little initial line here. From that, they added their initials. Anywhere you see fit, like certain things they got to agree to. So you double clarify it. And again, not a lawyer. Don't really know why we always have to initial things or sign the whole darn thing. But that's why I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> so then here, you would come back over here and you would do like zero, one, boom. Again, you would want any time it says the yellow, I would just recommend like fixing all that in the document itself before importing it over. Because the whole point of like adding the signature line is that this is the only thing you're going to have to do, right? So this is all said and done. This is now zero, two, because it's my secondary contract. And I'm going to tell you why the numbering is so important. So I'm going to click on that and it's hit save. Now, great. We have the two templates and we're ready to rock and roll. Now you can go ahead and just send this out to somebody really quickly here in your regular documents and contracts. Now that I have the two contracts here, I can go to all documents and contracts. There are two other things that I want to make sure I tell you about. If you are going to make it a contract where you're only sending out contracts, you have to kind of create a marketing template, like an email template, because if not, it's going to say proposal instead of contract. It's just kind of standard. Everybody has, you know, we're asked for it, a feature to be fixed, but until that feature gets fixed, just understand that you have to do this additional step. You are going to go into settings. You're going to notice that there is a document received template used to send a document out. And then you're going to have template used when the document has successfully been signed and accepted by the recipient. Now, if you have a default, it will actually send a template that has proposal in it. And I'm going to show you exactly exactly where you want to make sure that you kind of make your own with your own logo and everything else. If you now over here, head over to marketing. All right. And let's go to our emails and let's go to our templates. If you come in here and I'll just use a new template. All right. You're going to hit blank template. All right. Hit the design editor because we are going to build it from scratch to make it super easy. And the first thing you're going to do is, you know, maybe send a little logo so people know that it's from you. And you see where it says start from scratch. We're going to empty it all out. You would say, Hey, please sign the contract by clicking the link below. That's simple. What you're going to notice is, and what's really cool is if you go to the top right hand side, so this thing right here, it's called custom values and you click custom values. You are going to notice that there are proposals inside proposals. You are going to get the URL for the document. If there is, you know, kind of a name to it, you know what I'm saying? Sign the, and then here, maybe we put the contract name. All right, come over here, contract. Oop, let's go back again. Uh, where is it? It is back here in proposals, contract name, boom. And if you want to be fancy and you want to put it in a button now, I don't recommend doing that because there was a couple bugs when we did it, but let's make believe when that bug does get fixed because it is a bug and it is scheduled to get fixed. If you come over here and you add a button and that button is the link, all you have to do is click on the button itself and you're going to notice URL in here. You can use same one. So here proposals. And over here, URL, boom. And now it's got the document URL right in here and use this change it. Click here to sign contract. All right. And again, always name. This is going to be contract send. All right. Just to make it super easy for you. And you can, again, I'll probably put a little C01 to make it easier for you. And then obviously add a footer. Always add footers because the footers have the required things you need as far as being compliant. Boom. Now you got a footer. You got the logo. Everything's ready to rock and roll. We have the contract sent. Now, when somebody signs, you could do the same exact thing. Come over here. Now that we have like a working model, take this, go to right click, go to clone. Okay. And then this is going to be contract two and it's going to be contract signed. Okay. You're going to clone it. And instead of having a link, you would just say, thank you for signing. Okay. An email will be sent for the next steps, right? Because you're going to put them into an onboarding. And I'm going to show you how to do that automation real quick. Awesome. Now you created this whole thing. And again, obviously make it pretty. We're going super quick, but just to kind of get you the whole thing. One thing I forgot to mention and something you have to do first, save it. Okay. After you save it, I want you to hit the three little dots all the way up here. If you hit the three little dots and go to settings, make sure you set your thumbnail. name. This is going to be test school. All right. Because this is from a school. 
and this is testyouremail.com. And then the preview test is thank you for signing, okay? And then the email subject line will be thank you for signing. Again, just super quick, but just make sure you don't forget to do that because I forgot to do it in the other one. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit save template again. Now I'm gonna go back and just fix that subject line because I don't want you guys to forget it. On the contract send, I'm gonna do the same thing. When somebody comes in here, I'm just gonna make sure that I go to the top right hand side, hit the settings, again, test school, okay? Test at yourdomain.com. And then the preview test is please sign. And again, you would do like, again, a nice fancier wording or whatever else. But the whole point is to give you like a standard template. Awesome. Now you got your templates for that. Now that these are created, I'm going to go back to my payments. I'm going to go my documents and contracts. I'm going to go to all documents and contracts. I'm going to go to settings. And then I'm going to come in here and change my default to contract send up here and my contract signed in here. And now I'm going to hit save. Making sure you don't put template in front of it because it's going to actually send your name along with the document on the email subject line. And this will override whatever we put in the subject line. But we always want to make sure we have a fail safe and that's why I did what I did, right? So this is all said and done. And then the next thing that we're gonna do is just kind of come over here and go over the settings a little bit, right? So here is team notifications, defaults. This is the one that template used when the document has successfully been signed by the recipient that goes to you. Now that one, if you wanna create one, you're gonna follow the same exact steps, but just understand that you're gonna to have to do that. The other one here is more for invoicing, send invoices after document completion. This is if you have an actual invoice that you would send out, but I'm gonna teach you how to actually create this in automation. So technically don't need to necessarily worry about that, but I kind of wanna walk you through that, right? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go on opportunities, all right? and make believe we have a new student application. So somebody that is ready, we wanna send the contract out. So I wanna automate it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna add a stage that's gonna say send contract, okay? I'm gonna come all the way up. Boom, we're gonna move that right after, you know, before they take the deposit, because this is a school system, right? I wanna send the contract, then I'll collect the deposit, right? So what I'm gonna do is I wanna send that contract. So when I move somebody to send contract, because if I got off the phone and I'm closing them, I wanna make sure they get that immediate contract. I wanna make sure that that's there. And then I'm gonna automate that template. It's gonna be a super simple automation. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. I added this to the pipeline. Again, how did I do it? I went to opportunities. All right, I went to pipelines. And if you don't have a pipeline, create one. It is very easy. It's literally, you create one. You add the stages like new customer, booked, contracts, send contract, contract signed, and so forth and so on. So not only are we gonna do the contract, send contract, we're also gonna do contract signed. So we can keep that in order, okay? So send contract, contract sign, and then we just added those two. Very simple to do. Again, creating pipelines is super easy, but it's actually the coolest thing you can have because you can monitor where everybody is inside your process, okay? Now that I created those two items in the pipeline, I'm gonna create automations for it. So I already have a whole new student application, a whole entire process here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a contract signed. So in the contract sign, I'm gonna build it with you. The starting trigger is I'm gonna come over here, and it's gonna be when the pipeline stage changed to send contract. So in pipeline, right, in the new student that we have, I wanna send pipeline stage. When somebody moves into that line, I'm gonna send a contract out. But how can I send the contract, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here, super easy. Let me just tell you kind of what I did, all right? I don't need any of this, right? I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna actually delete all this stuff and we're gonna create it together. Pipeline stage to contract signed. All that I'm typically gonna do is come in here and I'm gonna look at the new features that, I'm just gonna kind of scroll down a little bit so you can see them. The new features are a little bit down and it's right here. Send invoice, send documents and contracts. And you can even do a Stripe one time charge if you have Stripe, which is really, really cool. We'll get into like different ways you can do that. So send contracts from user, which is gonna be let's say me, right? So I'm just gonna pick my friend here and we're gonna send Zero two for now. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save because remember, if they're this far down the pipeline stage, by now I have their name, I have their email, and I have their phone number, and now I can send this contract and just give them a little heads up. If I wanna send a text message, SMS, contact first name, we just sent the contract over. Please check your email and give us a call. A quick little message, just letting them know, hey, contact first name, we just sent the contract over. Please check your email and sign the contract. No, I don't know why I put give us a call and sign the contract so we can start your onboarding. Okay, just a little spell check here because you know, everybody that's been following me knows I'm a horrible speller. Good, we're ready to rock and roll. Now I would turn this on, I would hit save, but guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do a B to this because when they sign the contract, I want 
actions to happen right away. Maybe I give them access to a membership area. Maybe I send an invoice right away. Maybe I do a Stripe one-time charge. You can do any of these things now based on some of the triggers that were allowed in here and these automations, right? So now if I have 0-7 contract signed, this is ready to rock and roll. I can do it where the contract automatically initiates begin onboarding. Or if I want to be like kind of really clean, what I can do is I'm going to just go ahead and duplicate the workflow. We'll call this A and this will be contract signed. Oh, actually the other one should have been contract sent. All right, little mistake here. Let's just fix that right now. So there's no confusion. Let's just say send contract. How about that? Make it even better. Send contract. Sorry about that folks. Send contract. And then from here, now we have the send the contracts is the first action when I move it over. Now, what I want to do is when the contract gets signed, I then want to move the stage. So I'm going to delete this first step. Real simple. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put contract. Oh, can't do contract. You got to scroll down. You got to look for it because it's still kind of new. So it's always best to always look where it is. Okay. So here we are looking for documents and contracts Add a filter template because it's important that it's a certain template is zero two because that's the one that I use. This is why number becomes incredibly important. Status is signed and accepted. Now that this is signed and accepted. All right. I'm going to do all these actions because we're building these from scratch. Documents signed and accepted. Again, let me just show you what I did. I did documents and contracts inside the starting trigger. The template is number two, which is the contract that I originally sent out. The status is signed and accepted. And then from here, I can put a little tag just saying something contract signed, signed. Add a new tag, sweet, come over here. And now here's the multitude of choices that I have. If I want to send like a one-time charge to the Stripe, I'm going to go to Stripe, one-time charge, come in here. If they have the customer Stripe ID, which you can grab and pull a little bit more difficult if you have collected it earlier on, but it can be done what automatically just charges the customer. That's one way to do it. Not the recommended way we do it. You can also do where you now can send a Stripe payment link and they can go ahead and payment or you can send them to an order form to finish or buy your product. Or you can send an invoice. If you have the template and invoice, just like we did the contracts, if you go here and I have an invoice template, I just select the invoice and will automatically send the invoice if it's a standard charge, meaning if the charge is not changing per customer. If not, you're going to have a bunch of invoices and you're just going to pick the one that's relevant to this type of person that you're sending the contract to. So it'll be a contract to the invoice if you wanted to do that. Or like I said, you just send them a payment link, the Stripe one-time payment link. It's one of our update videos that you can watch, or you just kind of just automatically send them to an order form, which is our recommendation. Send them to an order form, have them pay them directly in an order form and you're ready to rock and roll. But how cool is that? You're able to pretty much get your contract signed and immediately start the onboarding. And that's exactly where I would go with the next. They signed the contract. Now I'm going to start the onboarding process. So here we have an automation that, you know, gives them access to a membership area, you know, tells them when the weekly calls are going to be, gives them access to a special calendar, whatever you want it to be. And all I got to do is I'll have that separate in another workflow and I'm going to give you like a sneak peek to it. Going to come over here and it'll begin onboarding. And I hit save trigger and it's saved. And here the onboarding could be videos. It could be membership area, community, whatever you want to give them access to. You would just now, you know, here's your onboarding email. Here's your access to your membership. And it's simple. The second we are automatically adding them. So we don't technically need the pipeline stage to move, but if you wanted to do it manually, you could also. So we give them the option, but because we're pushing them from the other workflow into here, it automatically will begin this workflow. So they'll get a tag. They'll create an update and opportunity just in case this hasn't do it before. I tell you the truth. We don't even need this anymore because we're doing it with a contract is signed. And then we send the first onboarding email and now we're ready to rock and roll. And that's it folks. That is contracts. That is the easiest way to do it. I hope you enjoy this video and we'll see you in the next one.